So now that you've done the single displacement lab and you've seen the alkali metals react, it's time to take a look at what the point of all that was. And what we've done experimentally is develop something that was developed quite a while ago called the activity series of elements. This is particularly important when doing single displacement reactions. If you remember the definition of single displacement reaction was a more reactive element will replace a similar less reactive element in a compound. And the important parts of this that we haven't yet addressed are more reactive and less reactive. The thing is that the metal or element that's by itself has to be more reactive than the metal or element, similar element, that's in the compound in order for a single displacement reaction to occur. If it's not, no reaction will happen. Another way of looking at this is that uh, the more reactive an element is, the less it wants to be the free element and the more it wants to be part of a compound. So more reactive elements will replace less reactive elements in compounds because they want to be part of the compound more. And the way we're going to sort of use this information is to look at what we have called the activity series of elements. Now this is a handout that will be available in Google Classroom. You can download it and uh, use it as you need to. To start with, it's separated into metals and nonmetals, and up to this point we've only looked at metals. Okay, uh, This is a more comprehensive list than the metals that you actually tested in lab. It includes the alkali metals, but it also includes some that we haven't tested yet. At the top are the most reactive, and as we go towards the bottom, uh, those are the least reactive. Now you may find other versions of this list that have a few metals here, flopped here and there, but in general it'll serve you well. This will give you an idea of whether or not a single displacement reaction is going to happen. In the final column over here on the right we have the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And you'll notice that if they're in fact listed in decreasing activity, they're also in the same order that they appear on the periodic table, fluorine above chlorine, above bromine, above iodine. So that's kind of an easy way to remember the halogens. Halogens will replace other halogens. They won't replace metals because they're not similar to metals. The other thing about this middle column of metals that I want you to be aware is that you'll see hydrogen is on this list. Hydrogen is not in fact a metal. It is a nonmetal. But when it is an ion, it can sometimes behave like a metal. And we already saw that some metals will react with HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, which contains the hydrogen ion. So there's a little note at the bottom here that says that metals from lithium down to sodium, so in other words, the first four metals here, uh, will replace hydrogen in both water and acid. They will react with water, and they will react with acid, and they will replace the hydrogen in both of those. Metals from magnesium to lead will react with hydrogen in acid only. They don't react with water. And below lead, well, below hydrogen actually, copper, silver, mercury, platinum, and gold, they don't react with acid or water. Okay, So that's just a little thing that you can keep in your head to figure out if an acid is going to have an effect on a metal. Now it's probably best if we do some examples here. Uh, so we'll take a, a few examples of, of, of reactions that will occur and some that won't occur. And we'll see if we can take a look at the difference. So let's take, for example, a reaction of potassium metal with a solution of aluminum chloride. All right. Now this is a single displacement reaction. I know that because I have a single element and a compound. And normally what I would say is that the single element, the potassium, will replace the similar element to itself in the compound. That would be the aluminum. Okay, so the potassium and the aluminum are similar. That's going to replace that if and only if potassium is more reactive than aluminum. So for that, we need to go back to our reactivity, our activity series, and we need to look. And we have to say, okay, well, there's, there's potassium up top, and aluminum is below it. That means potassium is more reactive than aluminum, which means that, in fact, potassium will replace aluminum. Aluminum will come out of the reaction by itself as the metal, and potassium will go with chloride, KCl. Not KCl3, because that's not how you write potassium chloride, KCl, aqueous. Okay, So I have to do a 3 there and a 3 there to get that to work. So this reaction will occur because potassium is more reactive than the similar element that's already in the compound. It means potassium wants to be part of a compound more. What if we were to react some zinc metal with a solution of calcium nitrate. A 
okay? So the two similar metals are zinc and calcium, those are the metals. And if we go and look at our activity series, we see that zinc is below calcium on the list. That means zinc is less reactive than calcium. And if it's less reactive than calcium, then it doesn't want to be in a compound as much as calcium does. Calcium is more reactive, it wants to be part of a compound. It already is, which means zinc is not strong enough to evict it, which means we will get no reaction. Okay? So these two will not react. You can put zinc and calcium nitrate all you want, nothing's going to happen. And you've seen what it looks like when you do something like that. It just sits there, it doesn't do anything. How about this? Chlorine gas. Reacting with a solution of sodium bromide solution, aqueous. Okay? Now, this is an element by itself. This is a compound, so therefore this is a single displacement reaction. The chlorine will replace an element that it's similar to. Well, it's not similar to sodium. Sodium is a metal. But it is similar to bromine because bromine is another halogen. So chlorine will replace bromine, but only if it's more reactive than bromine. And again, we need to go and check our list. Well, chlorine is above bromine on the list, which means that it will replace bromine. That means that chlorine will come in here, it will kick bromine out. Bromine will come out as Br2, because bromine is one of the seven diatomics. Now, bromine is a liquid at room temperature. If you look at the periodic table, you will see that. It's in blue or green, whichever color indicates liquids. That means that the chlorine goes with the sodium to form sodium chloride, NaCl. Not NaCl2, because that's not how you write sodium chloride. And that is aqueous, because it's an alkali metal compound. Now, in order to balance this, I need to have two NaCls and two NaBr to get it to work. Okay. What about if I have iodine, which is a solid, it's also a diatomic, reacting with a solution of aluminum chloride, AlCl3, aqueous. The iodine is similar to the chlorine, so it will replace chlorine only if it's more reactive. According to our list, though, iodine is lower on the list than chlorine, so it won't replace chlorine in a compound, so we say no reaction. Now, the hydrogen ones, I want to make sure you understand the hydrogen ones. If I have one of the first four elements, the first four elements, again, are lithium, potassium, calcium, and sodium, any of those metals will react with water. Now, I'm going to write water as HOH because I want you to remember that when the calcium replaces the hydrogen, it only replaces the first one. Okay? I've got my arrow. There we go. So H2 comes out, and calcium goes with the rest of this thing, with it, which is hydroxide. Ca is plus 1, hydroxide is minus 1. Sorry, Ca is plus 2, so I need two of those. And we'll make that aqueous. Okay. So I'm going to have to have two H2O in order for that to happen. Conversely, however, zinc metal reacting with water. If I look at the list, zinc technically is above hydrogen, but the note down here says that only metals from lithium to sodium will replace hydrogen in water. Zinc is not one of those. So zinc won't react with water. You will get no reaction. Okay? But zinc will react with hydrogen in acid. So if I put zinc, for example, with HCl, you did this one in lab, the zinc will replace the hydrogen. The hydrogen will come out as H2. The zinc will go into a compound with chlorine. Zinc is plus 2, Cl is minus 1, so ZnCl2, aqueous, I do that. Okay? So refer to the list when you have single displacement reactions and make sure that the element that's outside at the beginning, the one that's by itself, is higher up on the list than the one that's in the compound. Then you do the switch. If it isn't, you don't. It's pretty simple.